Oh, uh, yes. House of Pain and yes. seeing Jeff Zevely in tights. I was going to say, good eye there. You know? <laughs> no better way to start your Thursday morning. Glad you're with us at 6 a.m., everyone. I'm Eric Connor. He had shorts over the tights. I think so, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, I, and I'm not at your round board. Glad you're with us here. Uh, I know it's 6 a.m., still dark outside. I'm still getting used to the time yeah, me change. Too. I, yeah. know. I know it's like been, what, three weeks, and I still cannot adjust There to was it. light peering in through the drapes, Evan, when it was bedtime for me yeah. last night. Oh. Like, what is going on here? Isn't that startling? <laughs> it, and it's just going to get later from here, so yeah. later sunsets come. Our earlier sunrises are on the way. However, we're still about 50 minutes shy of it. Forecast highs today are going to be just slightly cooler than yesterday. We're transitioning away from record heat in Santa Ana's and transitioning toward cooler temperatures and a chance for showers going into early next week. Monday and Tuesday are the days to watch out for. 70s along the coast, 80s as you look farther inland for this afternoon. We'll detail that wet weather arrival in just a bit. As far as traffic goes, nothing going on along the coast or inland. I'll take you off to Pine Valley where we do have the left-hand shoulder blocked with a stalled vehicle on the 8 eastbound. This is at Buckman Springs Road. Back to you guys. And now, how does $400 in your pocket sound to help with high gas prices? I mean, look at the prices right now. We're looking at $5.98 for a gallon of gas, up two cents from the day before. People need help right now, that's for sure. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol is live in Tierra Santa with what the governor is proposing here. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Eric and Netta. Relief could be on the way coming from Sacramento, who does want to put up to $800 in your pocket. Now they're saying, 400 if you have one registered vehicle and eight if you add two. Now there's still a lot of discussion that needs to go over Governor Gavin Newsom's $11 billion plan. I think we've seen so many different proposals because first of all, there's a recognition that something has to be done. The only question was, how do we go about getting it? Now here is the breakdown of the $11 billion rebate proposal. Now people would get $400 in direct payments per registered vehicle up to two cars. Now that's about how much the 51 cent per gallon gas tax would cost you if you had a 15 gallon tank and filled it up once a week. Then another $750 million is being proposed in grants to public transit agencies to provide free rides up to three months. Six million will pause part of the sales tax for a year and 523 million will pause that increase in the gas tax we're supposed to see come July. Now this actually marks the third proposal on rebates from Democrats. Another plan was proposed $200 per California taxpayer who earns up to a certain amount and a Democratic caucus member wants $400 for all California filers, regardless of their income. Now, these three, in addition to the Republican proposal to suspend the 51 cent gas tax for up to six months immediately, is what lawmakers are looking at right now in Sacramento. Now, Governor Newsom did say electric cars are included in that rebate, which for many drivers, they say it might not be enough. Others are saying that it's just fighting inflation with even more inflation. A lot more discussion needs to be made passed in the legislature, and you could see money as soon as July. Of course, you can read more about this on CBS8.com. Do a deeper dive on all those plans. I'm Dana Marie McNichol, live in Kearney Mesa. I'll send it back to you. Now, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is asking NATO for more military assistance as Russia's invasion continues on. He made this plea during a video call this morning. It has now been one month since the war in Ukraine began. Zelensky is calling on people all around the world to publicly show support today. President Biden is in Brussels for the emergency NATO summit, and he's expected to announce plans for the U.S. to welcome up to 100,000 refugees from Ukraine. NATO leaders are also expected to discuss imposing more sanctions on Russia. President Biden scheduled to hold a news conference at noon our time. This all comes after the U.S. formally accused Russian troops of committing war crimes in Ukraine. And today's the final day now of Supreme Court confirmation hearings for Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. We are expected to hear testimony from other witnesses now. Yesterday, Republican lawmakers stepped up their criticism by trying to paint Jackson as being soft on crime. Senator Cory Booker, though, changed the tone and brought Judge Jackson to tears as he discussed the historic nature of her nomination. If confirmed, she'll be the court's first black woman justice. A final vote is expected ahead of the Easter holiday.
Big changes are coming to COVID rules for county employees. It will impact current employees who are not fully vaccinated as well as new hires. CBS 8's Chris Grow live outside the county administration building with what we need to know here this morning. Morning, Chris. Hey, good morning, Eric. Big change is coming for those that are unvaccinated and currently work for the county. They've been having to get tested now that will no longer be required starting on April 4th. Also, for yeah. those new employees, they will no longer have to have the vaccine. Here's Supervisor Jim Desmond okay. talking about that. We're going to be vigilant and, and keeping an eye on things uh, in the in the future. So hopefully we don't have to go back to this. But if we do, hopefully it will, we can do it in a in a uh, concerned and, and uh, learn from lessons learned in the last two years. Yeah, and so again, this will all come down starting on April 4th. Desmond went on to say the reason we're seeing this happen is because of declining cases, hospitalizations and deaths. Supervisor admits he would have liked to see this sooner, but is glad the move was being made regardless. Now, this requirement for employees and for new employees was put into place last August, so it's expiring in less than a year. Again, a good sign that progress is being made here in the battle against COVID-19. But some in the medical field, like Dr. Peter Chin Hong with UC CSF says vaccinations are still critical in keeping yourself protected. The whole purpose of vaccines is for the future. It's an insurance policy for the future, not only to protect uh, individuals from getting really sick, but to protect hospital resources in a community. And so Supervisor Desmond went on to say that, look, they have 19,000 employees here at the county, but there are still certain sectors that are short staffed. So he's hoping these changes will attract new hires to continue to apply, especially with less restrictions, including those who maybe have have not looked for work due to re those restrictions being in place. Eric. Chris Grow reporting live. Thank you, Chris. San Diego City Council President is proposing a no-fault eviction moratorium. This would prohibit no-fault evictions until 60 days after the end of California's state of emergency is over COVID-19. This moratorium would protect renters from a landlord trying to evict a tenant, for example, to remodel or to have a relative move in. It's highly important because I'm not the only family in this situation. It's very scary to have to face homelessness with children, with small children. This new proposal will go before the city council during its April 4th meeting. Okay, let's talk about the forecast here. It was so hot yesterday. Uh, Evan, do you guys have that view though? Whoa, yeah, how about that, right? <laughs> nice start to the morning. It is a pretty quiet start to the morning, I should say, especially compared to the last several days. We, instead of those Santa Ana wind gusts, are seeing mostly dry conditions outside, mostly calm winds, and we're starting to shift from offshore flow to onshore flow. So what that's going to do for us is bring in some coastal clouds at times, and we're going to start to see those temperatures drop down especially closer to the coastline. We're zooming out and we're getting lower down to the ground there. Take a look at your current temperatures as you walk out the door, mainly in the 50s and 60s out there. 60 for Carlsbad. I know it's fun. I like it. 56 for Oceanside, 54 for El Cajon right now and 57 in Alpine. Uh, as you walk out the door, you won't see those coastal clouds affecting us, but for Friday through Sunday, that is going to be the case. And that means fog and low clouds are definitely a likelihood. This all sets the stage for wet weather arriving Monday of next week and lingering into Tuesday. But hey, for today, enjoy the sunshine out there, right? We're sticking with sunny skies. Temperatures expected to make it to the upper 70s along the coast. Keep in mind, this is slightly cooler than yesterday. However, we are still going to be well above average. Average for this time of year is 67 degrees. So we'll still be about 10 degrees, if not closer to 15 degrees above average. And your inland valleys are still expected to make it well into the 80s today. So it will be another warm one with sunny skies, but this is kind of the marker where we transition now to cooler temperatures, a deeper marine layer through the morning hours. And it's a very gradual cool down up until that abrupt transition on Monday where we usher in plenty of wet weather and that'll linger then into 
into Tuesday. As far as your wind speeds and uh, direction go, notice one of two things. Number one, wind speeds have calmed down. We're back down to the single digits through much of the county. Number two, we're starting to shift direction. So you see right offshore, those clouds are going to start to develop and these arrows are going to start to point closer to the shoreline, indicating that we'll pick up on more coastal clouds through the next several days. As far as traffic goes, no major crashes or collisions to get to. We saw that crash in Pine Valley cleared. That means you were back to uh, pretty smooth speeds across the roads as you kick off your uh, Thursday morning. Back to you.